Did you know that in 2024, Oakland was ranked the fifth most dangerous city in America? Recently, many Oakland businesses such as In-N-Out, Denny's, Subway, Raising Cane's, and more have all closed or partially closed due to high crime. Other businesses, such as Clorox, have had to hire extra security to protect their employees. If you've been following the news lately about the progress of different cities in America, one city may have stood out, Oakland, California. Unfortunately, it probably didn't stand out for a good reason. Oakland has been struggling a lot as of late, facing challenges including businesses shutting down, increased rates of crime, drug use, homelessness, and more. Although not everything in Oakland is bad, 63% of Oakland residents said they were unhappy with what elected officials have been achieving. So today on Globe Discoverer, we're going to be looking at how Oakland got ruined. Oakland as history. Before we dive into the main reasons affecting Oakland today, it would be worthwhile to take a brief look at Oakland's history to provide some background for what's to come. The city of Oakland was first incorporated back in 1852, though some accounts place that year at 1854. Regardless, it grew quickly over the course of the next couple of decades, especially after Oakland was chosen as the location for the last stop on the West Coast for the Transcontinental Railroad. Things picked up even more after the 1906 earthquake and fire in San Francisco, as people relocated to nearby cities, including Oakland. Oakland continued to grow during the Second World War when military and naval institutions were developed there. In particular, there was a large black population that moved to the area to find work in the nearby factories. Unfortunately, things started to take a turn for the worse in the 1960s due to large rates of poverty and crime, along with growing racial tensions. Although there was a brief period of time in the 1970s and 1980s in which Oakland started to make a comeback, it faced another setback in 1989 when an earthquake caused significant damage to roads and bridges in the area, including the Bay Bridge, which connects Oakland to San Francisco. Today, Oakland's decline has unfortunately continued. As is the case with any city facing significant challenges, the issues are complex. We'll be sticking to the major factors that have led to Oakland's downfall. Issue number one, Oakland's economy. While the Bay Area has historically been ranked as having the best economy in the entire U.S., Oakland, unfortunately, has not fallen into this category. Like many cities in the country, when the pandemic started and workers stopped going into offices, Oakland's downtown area took a hit. As of 2023, Oakland's office vacancy rate had still not returned to pre-pandemic numbers, with a vacancy rate of 28.8% compared to 10% pre-pandemic. As a result, with fewer people in the area going to work, local businesses have suffered due to lower revenues. While local shops seem to be some of the hardest hit, even major retailers are facing challenges operating in the Oakland area. For instance, a Walmart shut down recently, indicative of larger issues. Another sign that indicates Oakland's economy is struggling is its budget deficit. At the end of 2023, Oakland had a deficit of about $54 million. However, that number is projected to become even higher in the first quarter of the city's next fiscal year, with a deficit of about $29 million. Part of this is due to a decrease in revenue and not necessarily an increase in spending. For example, the city did not attain as much revenue as it projected from taxes on hotel guests and taxes on property sales. Now, I will note that Oakland has a fairly diverse economy, which is typically seen as a good thing. Additionally, its residential vacancy rate has declined since the pandemic, which is also a good sign. But it's not clear if those upsides will be enough to overcome the city's larger economic challenges. Issue number two, an affordability crisis. Affordability is another major issue affecting Oakland. Throughout its history, Oakland was primarily known as a place for working-class people, meaning that it was affordable for the average person to live there. Today, however, that has changed. As of the latest census data, the median household income in Oakland was a little over $94,000, while the per capita income was about $56,600. While that's higher than the national median household income of about $75,000 and the per capita income of about $41,000.
When you consider the cost of living in Oakland, the amount those in Oakland are making still isn't enough to balance out its unaffordability. For instance, housing in Oakland is incredibly expensive, with Redfin reporting the median home sale price as of January 2024 to be over $752,000. That's almost double the national median home sale price of about $421,000. Yet, as we saw with household and per capita incomes, those are nowhere near double the national numbers. In addition, according to a survey from WalletHub, Oakland is overall not a great place if you're looking to buy. For instance, they recently ranked the best and worst cities for home buyers, according to factors including housing and home maintenance affordability, cost per square foot, and cost of homeowners insurance. While Oakland wasn't the lowest on the list, it wasn't anywhere near the top either, as WalletHub ranked it at number 60. That puts it as worse than other large cities like Miami, Seattle, Chicago, and even other California cities like Sacramento. While we've seen that housing is clearly expensive, it's not the only factor affecting affordability here. According to Rent Cafe, while living in Oakland is only 2% more expensive than elsewhere in California, it's 44% more expensive to live here than elsewhere in the U.S. For example, housing, including both buying a place and renting, is a massive 98% more expensive than elsewhere in the nation. Utilities are 30% more, groceries 28% more, and healthcare and transportation 26% and 33% more, respectively. As you can probably tell by this point, Oakland is simply not really able to support a working class anymore due to its incredibly high costs of living. Issue number three, crime. To understand Oakland's crime rates today, Let's start by taking a look at some of Oakland's crime trends over time. At one point in 1983, Oakland was nicknamed the crime capital of the entire San Francisco Bay Area. By the time 2010 had rolled around, Oakland had become slightly less dangerous, but not by much, as it had moved from the third most dangerous city in the country to the fifth most dangerous. Between 2014 and 2015, however, Oakland saw a pretty significant decrease in its crime rate by over 14%. This continued with a 1%, 8.9%, and 2% decrease in crime for 2016, 2017, and 2018, respectively. Although this might make it seem like Oakland has turned the corner and is now a safe city, this is unfortunately not true, especially considering 2018 was six years ago. Recently, for instance, Oakland has been struggling with its law enforcement personnel, as it currently lacks a permanent police chief and has an overall shortage of officers. Coinciding with this is a significant uptick in crime, including robberies increasing 35% between 2022 and 2023, carjackings increasing 22%, vehicle theft 51%, and burglaries 36%. In addition, the city has seen its number of homicides surpass 100 annually for the fourth year in a row, with a total of 104 homicides reported by October of 2023 and 118 by December 2023. While these numbers are still lower than those seen about a decade ago and are significantly less than the crime rates seen in the 1980s and 1990s, they remain at troublingly high rates. Plus, these numbers are well above the crime rate seen in other California cities of a similar size. For instance, Oakland has the highest violent crime rate, with 1,500 crimes for every 100,000 people. For comparison, neighboring San Francisco has the sixth highest crime rate, which is only 636 violent crimes per 100,000 people. What all this means is that Oakland is a city that still struggles substantially with high rates of crime. One unfortunate impact of this is that it costs the city a lot of money. For instance, a recent report that looked at crime across the country found that Oakland has one of the highest costs of crime per capita, with an average per capita crime cost of $5,110. Issue number four, homelessness. The city of Oakland is home to about half of Alameda County's homeless population and saw the biggest increase in its homeless population out of anywhere else in the Bay Area in recent years. Today, homelessness continues to be an issue, with residents of Oakland saying that homelessness was the most pressing problem the city is facing compared to 20% citing crime and violence 
and 14% citing affordability. Between 2019 and 2022, homelessness increased 24% in Oakland, and since 2015, the number increased by a whopping 131%. Over the past 10 years, homelessness has doubled in the city, fueled largely, according to officials, by inequalities and a lack of affordable housing. In terms of the last point, one estimate said that the average person would need to earn about $44 an hour to be able to pay for a two-bedroom in Alameda County, which is far above the minimum wage of $16.50 an hour. As of 2022, about 41% of homeless people in Oakland lived in a tent or elsewhere outside, while 58% lived in either a car, van, or RV. While there's not as much data available for those living on the streets or in vehicles, of those living in shelters, 36% are chronically homeless, 25% have mental health issues, 11% have drug-related issues, and 4% have left a domestic abuse situation. One positive note is that the growth rate of homelessness has been decreasing recently, and the city does seem to be doing a better job of housing homeless people, having nearly doubled the number of shelter beds. However, that is coming at a cost, quite literally, with one recent audit finding that the city spent about $70 million over the course of three years just on programs trying to help homeless people transition into long-term housing. As some critics of these programs have noted, it's not clear how effective they are, especially as the city doesn't seem to be doing a great job of tracking their efficacy. Issue number five, drug crisis. Similar to issues seen with crime, Oakland has been struggling with a drug crisis, which has also negatively impacted the city. Methamphetamine is one drug that has been one of the biggest drug-related issues in Oakland. It's the second most common drug on the street after opioids and has also seen the second highest number of people dying from it. According to Oakland Side, a nonprofit, meth use has been particularly high in Oakland's homeless population, with healthcare workers reporting that homeless people who use drugs like meth often begin using after they become homeless in an attempt to cope with their circumstances. In addition to the homeless, hospitalization data in Oakland shows that although more white people in Oakland use meth than black people, black people are dying from overdoses at a significantly higher rate. For example, in 2021, psychostimulant drug deaths in Alameda County were at a rate of 13.71 per $100,000 for white residents, which officials say showcases how drug use disproportionately affects people of color. Unfortunately, Drug use, including meth use, has seen an increase in recent years. For instance, in 2016 and 2017, drug overdoses from stimulants that include meth had leveled out at about 1.7 deaths for every 100,000 people, but that number jumped all the way to 6.3 deaths per 100,000 in 2021. When it comes to meth-related deaths, that number has increased substantially. For instance, in Alameda County, where Oakland sits, meth-related deaths increased from 10 in 2017 to 166 in 2021. What about the other California cities everyone is leaving, 